In this beginner tutorial, you will learn how to create this simple but awesome scroll animation inside of Framer. As always, if you want to follow along, the working file is linked down below. So as we scroll, the whole section kind of fades in, revealing a crazy banshee flying past the screen here, while the landscape is kind of getting zoomed in in the background here, and the content is faded in with some kind of a rotation. So there are four different groups of animations in this sequence. But before we get into each and every one of them, let's set up the structure. We'll create a frame and we'll call it section. And inside of this section, we're gonna add all the elements that we need. So I'll throw in this little banshee. I'll throw in the background image. I'm even gonna center it gonna throw in the text and I'm gonna throw in this blur that is gonna be behind the text. So I'll move the text on top of the blur. I'll make sure that every single layer here is separate, that nothing is nested inside of another layer because if it's nested and we add animations to a layer that has more layers within it, we're gonna add that animation to every single layer. Now, with everything inside of the section, we just have to do a couple of tweaks to the layout. So first of all, the background image, I'm gonna pin it to all of the sides here. So zero, 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 and zero. Now, if we change the size of this, it scales responsibly. I'm gonna take the text stack, I'm gonna unpin it from the left, and I'm gonna pin it to the right instead. And I'm gonna set 56 pixels from the right. And I'm gonna add a little pin from the top, maybe 120 pixels. I'm gonna increase the height of this so that it doesn't break the layout. Then I'll go to the blur and do the same thing. But with the blur, I'm gonna go with minus 112 and from the top, maybe 256, something like that. And then we have this poor little banshee and I'll just place him or her down here to the left. Now, if we try resizing again, we can see that everything is responsive. It works great. And the reason this works great is because we pinned everything like real framer role models. Now let's take this section and throw it into our view here. If it doesn't work like it didn't work here, you can just grab it and throw it in like this in the side panel. With this section selected, I'm gonna go to width, set it to fill. And now an important note before we animate. Since the animations are triggered on scroll, you need space that you can scroll through for the animations to work. If you don't, and we remove these, and we play it, it's gonna look something like this. A half animation. So let's avoid that. Now let's get to animations already. So let's start with the Banshee. And as we scroll, we want it to travel up into the right of our viewport. So I'll select the Banshee, I'll go to Effects, Scroll Transform, then I'm gonna change from On Scroll here as a trigger to Section in View. So I want it to trigger as our viewport hits this section. And we can change if it should be when the top of our viewport hits the section, if it's the middle or if it's the end. Let's start with the end. Then we're gonna actually pick the section. And in here, you can see that we have only one section. And this section is for my example here. So we haven't added one for this yet. So I'll go to the new section that we created. I'll highlight it or select it. I'll go to the right sidebar, hit plus and scroll section, and give it a name like amazing banshee-ness. Uh, that is suiting for our little banshee here. I'll select the banshee again, go back to transform, go to section and select amazing banshee-ness. So now it's gonna trigger when we get to this section. I'm gonna change the from state. Um, we want it to be one in opacity. It's not gonna fade in. 
and we want it to be one in scale because it's not gonna change size. Then I'm gonna change that to state because it's gonna be one in opacity, one in scale, but it's also gonna change in a, yeah, it's gonna change a bit. We're gonna have an offset here. So on the x-axis, we're gonna have a 700 pixel change. It's gonna go from the left to the right. And the y-axis, maybe a minus 700, so that it flies up into the sky here. I'll even give it some rotation, so it kind of slides a bit. Go back here, and as a final little piece, we can hit this transition here, add a spring animation. And now, if we give this a test run, we scroll down, our Banshee is flying. Looks amazing. And the trigger is now the bottom. Remember that we picked the bottom. So as soon as my viewport hits the section here, it starts triggering. If we want it to trigger when we are in the middle of the screen, I can go back to it. So my Banshee and the transform go back and set viewport middle. Now, if I play it, it's not gonna start playing until I hit the middle. So it's gonna be a bit delayed like this. And of course, if we change it to the top, it's gonna start triggering as soon as we hit the top of the section. So the Banshee won't fly until now. Now, next up is the background image. Let's just select the image. Let's go to effects and let's go to scroll transform once again. I'm gonna change the trigger to section in view, change the section to amazing banshee and from, once again, from one, one, but two, one, and maybe 1.2. So it scales a bit in size. And we can add the transition. Now, when we play it, we're gonna have it both increase in size, while the Banshee is a bit slow here. So I forgot to go back to the Banshee and say, hey dude, you should actually fly when the middle of my viewport hits the screen or hits the section. So something like that. Awesome. Now the third thing is the text animation. So let's click on chapter one here. I'm gonna go to effects and hit scroll animation this time. I'll say that this starts triggering when not layer in view, but section in view. And once again, amazing banshiness is in the top of the viewport. So it will wait a bit longer until the text is actually triggered. I'll leave it on replay, then I'm gonna head into our inner state. I'm gonna leave it at zero in opacity. I'm gonna have one in scale, but I'm gonna add a little rotation here. So three degrees should be enough. And then I'll have it travel 20 pixels from the bottom. For the transition, we can go with this built-in spring transition, the default value. I'll go back or hit exit. I'll go here to the animation, hit copy by just right-clicking, copy. Then I'm gonna select all of the other elements here in this stack, right-click, paste effects. To make it a bit cooler, I'll take each one of these, go into the effects, enter on the transition, I'll click on spring, and I'm gonna add a slight delay. So for this one, I'm gonna add 0 0.1. For the next one, and by the way, a little hack, you can just stay in this animation modal, click on the next element you wanna add it to, and you're gonna get to that next element, but with its own animation settings. So this one will be 0 0.2, so 0 0.1 more in delay. And the third one will be 0 0.3. Now if we play it and I scroll down, whoops, something crazy happened there. Some kind of bug, not my problem. And we scroll in and it fades in. And we scroll out, it fades out. And this is, once again, when the top of our viewport hits the section. Now the last thing is just the section fade in. So I can select the whole section. I'll go to effects, go to scroll transform, section in view, amazing banshiness. 
leave it at bottom and it's going to be from zero in opacity one in scale two one in opacity one in scale and we can add a little cool transition and voila there we have our amazing thing smooth as butter now if you want to learn how i created the animation for the hero section of this site check out this video until the next one have a great life